Do you ever learn a brand new guitar lick and just not know how to use it or modify it beyond how you learned it in the first place? Well, wonder no more, because today on the Acoustic Tuesday show, I'm gonna share with you one simple, fun, bluesy lick, but I'm gonna play it nine different ways. And not only am I gonna play it nine different ways, I'm gonna play it on nine different small body guitars from my guitar center. Hey TAC family, and welcome to Acoustic Tuesday episode 159. The Acoustic Tuesday show is designed to bring fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, and of course, success stories from your fellow Tony's Acoustic Challenge members. In fact, today, you're gonna to be learning about Brian S. and how his small wins have added up through the years. Now, before we get to Brian and his secret to success, let's dig into the nine guitars in my guitar arsenal and nine different ways to play the same exact blues lick. So let me go ahead and set this up for you. See, back last week on Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we learned this really cool bluesy lick in the key of A. It was named after, well, it was named Rothgar, and I'm pretty sure that was the dragon from Beowulf, it was a character in Beowulf. I named it when I was in a Beowulf phase. Nonetheless, the lick is a bluesy turnaround in the key of A. And I think once you hear it, you'll think, oh, I've actually probably heard that before. And I've actually heard it in a song before. So let's take a listen to the lick and how it was taught. Now that lick is super cool and super useful. But it begs the question, once you learn a lick, how do you modify it and how do you expand on it or use it in song? Well, you're gonna see that play out today in full form on nine different guitars for my guitar arsenal. Yes, I've got the years 1958, 1948, 1935, and even 1926 represented today. You're gonna see some killer guitars, but more importantly, you're gonna get a look at how you can start to transform licks and apply them to your playing. So they're not just kind of a one and done sequence. So the very first guitar we're gonna look at today is a Martin Singolo 18 from the year 1958. I got this a couple years back when I was visiting my son Aiden in Chicago. We decided to go to the Chicago Music Exchange together and take a look at guitars. About three hours later, uh, Whitney and Aiden were extremely patient with me as I picked out uh, this beautiful guitar and had it shipped here uh, to Bozeman, Montana. I love the way it sounds. It has beautiful projection and just, just this nice kind of old woody sound. I guess that's why you buy old guitars. And here it is, let's have a listen. Onto the Beard Decaphonic Sidecar. I got this guitar last year. In fact, the folks at Beard, Denny, I'm looking at you, uh, sent this guitar to me for review and I couldn't help but fall in love with it. It has such a wonderful bark and bite. I just wanted to finger pick on it all day and that's exactly what I did. In fact, uh, upon returning this guitar, uh, Denny and I were sharing some emails and I said, Denny, I don't really wanna send this back to you. I really dig this guitar. It has uh, just this wonderful tone that no guitar has in my collection. So let's, let's do a deal. So I bought the guitar from Beard and lo and behold, it's one of my favorite finger pickers. <laughs> This guitar came from Eddie's Guitars in St. Louis. It's a custom bourgeois OMSC, which is a 12 fret cutaway, a beautiful guitar. It's got Coca Bolo back and sides and a torrified Italian spruce top. Huge thanks to Matt Chalka for helping me design this guitar and making sure I dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's and capitalized all the right letters and all that stuff. But this guitar really has been a great addition to my guitar arsenal. It has this wonderful crystalline quality on the higher strings matched with some really powerful bass as well. I love playing this guitar in alternate tunings because it has this wonderful sustain. However, playing it in standard tuning offers uh, quite the cornucopia of discovery as well, as you'll hear.
Let me transport you to 1948. This is a 1948 0017. Now I know what you're saying. Tone, that looks awful shiny to be from 1948. This guitar is anything but original. Uh, it has different tuners. It's completely refinished. The inside was completely spray painted black for some reason. Whatever the case may be, I don't know. But I got this guitar kind of on a whim. Uh, I saw it pop up for sale at Music Villa and I immediately called my buddy Ross and I said, let's, let's make that mine because they weren't asking that much for it because it is definitely a player's guitar. And play it, I do. In fact, I really dig this guitar in open D tuning. I think it has a wonderful ring to it, something that I'm not used to from small body guitars, specifically a double O. Uh, and as far as comfort, the neck profile is beautiful and it sits on my lap quite, quite comfortably. On to a Martin OM28 Marquee. This is a guitar that I bought when Whitney and I were first starting to date. It was kind of my proclamation, proclamation? however you say it. It was my proclamation on being a guitar geek to Whitney and she passed the test with flying colors. She didn't even skip a beat. She encouraged it and I knew, I knew from then on, this guitar and I were gonna have a great relationship as were Whitney and I. Uh, this guitar is actually quite the Swiss Army knife. It finger picks fantastically, it flat picks incredibly well and it has so much volume. I don't even have to hit the strings all that hard and it just freely offers volume. One of the reasons I got this guitar in the first place. Plus, I love the neck profile on it. It's a modified V neck profile and it is so damn comfortable. Uh, bar chords seem to come with ease on this guitar. And like I said, between that and not having to strum very hard, this guitar makes playing extremely easy. I've got two guitars left that are from 19, one of them's from 1935, the other's from 1926, and this is not it. This is a new uh, Bourgeois OMC large sound hole. I got this guitar at Heartbreaker Guitars when Whitney and I and her family were on vacation, and I am so happy I got this guitar. This was one of those guitars that I bought. Uh, I was on vacation, I was kind of feeling the, the, the mood of the trip, and I thought, you know, I got to meet Brendan from Heartbreaker Guitars and I just felt like all the stars were aligned. So I thought I'm gonna grab that guitar. And I didn't quite know exactly where it was gonna fit in my guitar arsenal. And then I went to the recording studio and I thought, oh, this is exactly where it fits. It's got a mahogany back and side, Sika spruce top, and it just has this wonderful presence on the microphone. Not so much from the player's point of view, but in a recording studio, this has become one of my go-to weapons. Mm -hmm. I promise I'm gonna to get to those older guitars, but we have to look at this one first. This is the first custom guitar I designed, and I didn't even, I, I didn't want to buy it, or I should say, when I designed it, I didn't have me as the final owner in mind. I simply designed this to be an eye-catching guitar. This is a custom Martin OM with bird's eye maple back and sides, and a beautiful high altitude Swiss spruce top. And this guitar stole my heart nearly immediately. I specced it out, um, <laughs> I specced it out at Martin some f five or six years ago. And when it came in, after specking it out, it takes about six months or so, it came in and I was just enamored with the tone. I couldn't get this guitar out of my head. It quickly became mine. I had to put it on layaway. It took some time to pay it off, but I'm so happy I did. Uh, this is now my beloved Martin Custom OM Tuxedo. Uh, again, I use this in uh, not so much in standard tuning, but a lot of alternate tunings because it handles those lower notes so well. It retains this clarity, I think because of the maple, but tuning it up to standard tuning for this experiment was pretty awesome and rewarding because it sounds pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. 
now we're getting into some juicy guitars. This guitar is a 1935 Martin Singolo 17. It is all solid mahogany. And this guitar, when I first saw it, was literally in pieces. There were cracks, splits, you name it, this guitar had the problem. But it went off to a luthier, came back, and we fell in love. It was a long journey together, and I have to say I'm so happy that we took it together, me and the guitar, because this guitar has been a go-to live performing guitar for me for, gosh, three or four years now, and it is kind of my old trusty standby. It always sounds good whether I plug it in or play it acoustically, especially acoustically, let's be honest, and it just it just has the mojo. Look at the top. It looks like it's been through seven different wars and back. And it's just kind of my old buddy. And uh, I think it sounds pretty darn good, especially when you play blues on it. Finally, the time is here. This is a 1926 Martin 2-17, size 2, model 17. It is all solid mahogany, Brazilian rosewood fingerboard, Brazilian rosewood bridge. Everything on this guitar is original except for the bridge. Uh, the bridge was actually recut because the previous one was in very bad disrepair. But I mean, we're talking bar frets, the neck, the tuners, everything is original on this guitar. And it is a stunner. It's as light as a feather. It's as if somebody injected helium into this guitar. Guitar, and it is a wonderful couch companion. This guitar has sat on the couch with me time and time again. It's my go-to kind of writing, songwriting, figuring out lyrics guitar, and it's just kind of always there, like a like a good buddy, like a trusty old buddy. I got, I, I guess I got nine buddies, but this one, uh, because of its size, is really convenient to bring along and always kind of have out and available. So let's go ahead and give it a listen and play some blues on it. Picking a favorite guitar out of these nine would just be, well, it's just not fair. It's kind of like picking your favorite child. You just don't do that. But I can ask you what your favorite is. So in the comments below, please let me know which guitar grabbed your ear. Let me know the model and why it stood out to you. Sometimes it's really nice to hear someone else explain a guitar because, well, you're hearing it from their perspective. It's pretty darn cool. Now, the whole experiment here was designed around learning guitar licks. You know, one of the common problems that guitar geeks have is we learn a guitar lick, but we're not quite sure where to place it, and we're not quite sure how to modify it. Now, what you saw today with these nine different guitars was essentially the same lick, the same fretted positions, but each one sounded different because I was messing with the rhythm. So often when we're learning a lick, it feels like, okay, well, what's written on the tab is what's written on the tab and I'll learn it verbatim and I should never stray from that. And I think that's an okay philosophy, but once you get comfortable with that lick, you're gonna wanna use it somewhere. And once you get comfortable with that lick, you're gonna think, gosh, is there any more to this? Can I, it's kind of maybe even getting a little boring. Well, if you look at the rhythm, how you actually play the lick, you don't even have to learn anything new in terms of finger positions. You can just modify the rhythm and have what sounds like a completely new lick. Each of the nine examples that I shared with you had a different rhythm. Rhythm is an extremely powerful musical tool when you choose to modify it. So go ahead and lean on that rhythm a little bit and see if you can take a lick that you know and modify it just a little bit. Now I wanna shift your focus to the TAC family a little bit. In fact, I wanna introduce you to Brian S. Now before we dig into his story and the secret to his success, I want you to know I've got a couple announcements coming up later on. A couple albums have been released and I just wanna share some, some news and happenings with you. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit, but let's go ahead and sink into Brian's story. Now Brian S. is a lifetime Tony's Acoustic Challenge member. He's a fretboard wizard alumni and he's an Acoustic Life Festival goer. And he just recently celebrated five years with Tony's Acoustic Challenge. And he had this to say about Tony's Acoustic Challenge. It doesn't seem like it relates, but I promise you it does. I love yellow cake with chocolate frosting. 
don't worry, it doesn't end there. The lessons are the cake, the community is the frosting, and the extras, like the Acoustic Life Festival and the live virtual events, are the luscious ice cream that goes with the cake. Uh, pretty accurate description. I too very much enjoy yellow cake. I love ice cream. Chocolate frosting is my favorite. Sometimes I like to make a little slurry with all the ingredients combined. That's a side point. We don't have to get into that. Uh, let me share with you a bit of Brian's story uh, because he has actually overcome an enormous plateau. Brian was on a 25 year plateau, flatlined in his progress, but now he doesn't feel that way anymore. And he has a secret to his success. And I wanna share that with you here in just a moment, but this is where Brian started. Now you might be thinking to yourself as you hear this story, holy smokes, that's where I started too, or holy smokes, that's where I am right now. So it's kind of a cool thing to hear other guitar geek stories. Here it is. I've long played with our contemporary group at church, but I was on a 25 year plateau of playing open chords and I hardly ever ventured past the third fret. I would sometimes grab a bar G minor or an A chord, and I knew one song that used three finger chords way up on the ninth, seventh, and fifth frets. That was a pretty fancy song. I had no idea what those chords were. Until joining TAC, I thought I was a fairly accomplished finger picker. Needless to say, after seeing so many awesome players on TAC, I realized just how flat a plateau I was on. Now on to his progress. He says this, I certainly, uh, these are the three things he can do now that he couldn't do before Tony's Acoustic Challenge. Well, I certainly venture up beyond the third fret a lot more. Plus, now I know what those mini chords are that I had been playing, and I can grab them or figure out new ones as needed to add texture and variety to otherwise bland open chord shapes. I can grab accent notes with a scale with much more confidence. I still mostly play out of chord shapes, but I can find melody lines and harmony notes much more easily. Now I know they are nearby and I can experiment much more freely. My flat picking is more accurate and I feel like I am making progress strumming with a thicker pick. I had always strummed with paper thin picks. Thicker picks create much nicer tone. The best thing is that my family, especially my guitarist big brother Dean, and friends have told me that I am playing better since joining TAC. I really appreciate that because when you live in the forest, it's hard to tell how the trees have grown. Now I wanna take a moment and pause here because it's so cool to hear the progress that Brian has experienced. And I believe that is attributed to something that he didn't mention here. Something that I see in Brian time and time again when he attends the live guitar parties, when I saw him at the Acoustic Life Festival, because he did go to the Acoustic Life Festival, he jammed on stage with a band, and he played open mic, Puff the Magic Dragon, if my memory is serving me correctly. and. Um, there's a secret to why he's feeling this progress now, even after a 25 year plateau. One of the things that has always been present in his journey is his knack for reflection and evaluation. This is a necessary step in everyone's guitar journey. We all need to do it. We all need to take a step back from the guitar and look at where we started, how things are going right now, and where we're going in the future. And Brian S. does this time and time again, not just now in, in celebrating his tac anniversary, but he does it every single time we have a live guitar party. All the members get together, we chat about guitar, we do a little workshop, and every time I ask for small wins, I see Brian's name pop up. He is regularly celebrating small wins. Small wins are absolutely vital to his guitar journey, as you can see by his success, but also your guitar journey. Not only hearing small wins from others, because that helps you know that things are possible, but also celebrating small wins for yourself. And that's, that's one of the things that a lot of us skip over, myself included. But once you get in the habit of celebrating those small wins, you'll be amazed at how you start to shift your perspective on your guitar journey, as Brian is the case in point here. Things start to become a lot more positive. Things start to become well within the realm of possibility because you're, you take small little steps towards it and you celebrate each one. Bottom line, celebrate small wins. It worked for Brian because he busted out of a 25 year plateau. And he did this one step at a time, celebrating one small win at a time. Something you can do right now for your guitar journey. The Acoustic Tuesday show has nearly come to an end, but I do have a couple of announcements and some random things I wanna share with you before I let you go for the day. Plus, we have to take a sneak peek into next week. Next week's gonna be a killer episode involving travel. I know a lot of us aren't doing it right now, but next week's episode is gonna gear you up for when you can. 
We'll get there, but first, a couple of random things. I wanted to share this guitar snow that was submitted by Ryan Bond from Oakdale, Louisiana. Talk about, uh, this is kind of a fam jam slash guitar snow. Let's go ahead and dig into the specifics and then we'll we'll read a little bit more about Ryan's guitar snow and what it took for all the things to align and be there. Uh, the front row, he's got a 2019 Mexican Tele. Next up, a Martin HDC28E from 2020. Next, a 1994 Tysco Del Rey from the 60s, which was a present for his dad's 16th birthday from his grandfather, and then his dad gifted it to him. That's pretty darn cool. The back row, we've got a Taylor Academy 12EN, a 2018 Ada Banjo, which was a gift, an Epiphone mandolin, also a gift, a fiddle, which doesn't really have a name on it, which was also a gift, uh, and then a Yamaha fretless bass, somewhere uh, made somewhere between 96 and 2000. First of all, just let's st step back here. That was four, or three or four gift instruments in there. You got a good set of uh, guitar geek friends there, Ryan. So uh, hang on to those people tight, not just for the gifts, but it seems like they, they fuel your journey. That's what I meant by that. Uh, let's keep going on down the list. We've got a, a 60s silver tone, which was one of his grandfather's first electrics. And then he's got an Aria imitation dove. Not sure of the year on that, but a favorite that has been passed down three generations. A lot of mojo in that guitar. That is so, so cool. Um, dead center, you thought I forgot. No, it's my 2019-ish Gibson SJ200 with my own personal touch double white pickguard. Thanks to my wife, Tater, for, pooking, for putting up with me and for posing with me. Also, extra bonus, look for a Martin N20 and LR Bags reverb pedal and my favorite straps, a 3-inch and 2-inch Native Sun strap. Thanks to you and your show, I've learned so much, and I know what I want when I'm ready. I appreciate you, bro. Well, I appreciate you, Ryan. Thank you so much for sharing your guitar snow. So cool to have your wife uh, pose with you there. That's, that's just so cool when you can kind of you know, bring the family around the guitars. And it's kind of like the spouses always kind of look at you and they're like, yeah, you're kind of weird, but hey, I, I love you. And that's, it's just so cool. I get that with Whitney all the time. And, and I've seen a couple of different guitar signals where the spouses are included and they, they always do so with such uh, good sports. So uh, cheers to the guitar geek spouses out there that may or may not be watching alongside their uh, beloved. So let's go ahead and... Um, there's a couple of random things, uh, some some news and happenings that I wanted to share with you. Uh, real quickly, uh, I don't know if you all have know, uh, know this, but uh, I guess now it would be about two weeks ago, week and a half, two weeks ago, Khaki King released a brand new album entitled Modern Yesterdays, and it is beautiful. It's the type of album that really sets a mood. It's the type of album that just has this vibe to it. It's the type of album that you can get lost in. And as usual, Khaki King is on point. Her compositions are just they're just otherworldly. They just kind of remove you from wherever you're at and transport you for the length of the album or for the length of the song. In fact, let's go ahead and take a quick listen to a song. This song is entitled Teek, T-E-E-K, and she's using a passerelle bridge on it, which is kind of a, a device that turns your instrument into a Japanese koto. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful song, and Khaki plays it so well. Let's give it a listen. Next up on my list of randomness is something that involves Billy Strings. Billy Strings is on my list of random things because, well, he sings. Yes, I'm in rhyming mood. You're very welcome for that display of uh, phonetic mastery. Yikes. Anyways, uh, I wanted to let you know that Billy Strings has some new merch out. Billy Strings has really been hitting it hard with the streaming shows and things like that, and it's been so lovely to have that breath of fresh air and almost kind of level of consistency. For those of us who really dig live music, it's so nice that him and the band are still putting themselves out there and playing live uh, because they're one of the best live bands I've ever seen, period, hands down. Just, just top notch, top of the mountain. Pinnacle. I have no other words for the top. Um, anyways, <laughs> he's got a new line of merch out, and I wanted to, to mention it to you because it really kind of scratched my itch. Um, 
there's a lot of skulls involved and a lot of really cool imagery, and I really dig it. Uh, there's some great hoodies, t-shirts, uh, stickers, you name it. There's a bunch of stuff, and I wanted you all to, to check that out. I already placed my order. Some of the items are pre-order. Some of them are currently in stock, I'm pretty sure. Uh, check the, his website for details, but anytime you can support an artist that you really enjoy by purchasing their merch directly from them is is something that I personally like and I recommend that guitar geeks do uh, if you have uh, the ability to do it. Uh, or of course, spread the word. If you know other Billy Strings fan, fans that may not, um, I'm good at rhyming, but apparently not pronunciation. Um, <laughs> if you know any other Billy Strings fans uh, that, that don't know about his merch, make sure to spread the word because it's some really great stuff. Um, I've always been impressed with his merch and t-shirt designs and things like that. And now lastly, on my list of random things, is another thing with strings. Yes, indeed. It's a <laughs> Taylor Guitars just announced a new model, the Grand Theater model. Now, I don't have all the specs dialed in yet because I just actually was reading about this. I feel like since Emerson's been born, I'm a little behind the times when it comes to news, but this was a really cool discovery and it's kind of a, a model in between the GS Mini and I believe the GC, the Grand Concert, it sits right in the middle of that. I want to say, the best of my memory, it's a 24 and 1 8 inch scale, 24 and 5 8 inch scale. It's a shorter scale, and apparently what it feels like in terms of string feel is how a guitar, if you take a full scale length guitar, 24 and a half or 24, or, uh, 24.9 inch scale length guitar and tune it down a full step. Uh, this is how this guitar particularly feels in terms of, of string feel. It's either a full step or a half step. Nonetheless, this guitar is smaller. It's a little bit more manageable for the fingers and it's kind of that in-between travel guitar slash in-home studio guitar. Very comfortable to play. I haven't played one yet, but I've read some reviews and they sound great. Uh, they certainly look beautiful. There's a matte finish, I believe, and they're using Urban Ash on the back and sides. Again, I'm, I'm pulling all this from the top of my head. There's a... Um, a podcast I want you to be aware of, the Taylor from the Factory podcast. They actually did a video one with both Bob Taylor and Andy Powers talking about this model. So make sure to check that out. Plus, there's a couple different reveal videos that are out there, plus my alma mater, uh, Music Villa, the Acoustic Letter, they did a really cool review of this particular guitar as well. So make sure to check that out for those of you looking for that kind of in-between model, maybe for a player with smaller hands, like a, a, maybe even a good for a, a child that's kind of looking for their next level guitar. So that is my list of randomness for this week. Let's go ahead and take a sneak peek into next week to see what's gonna happen on Acoustic Tuesday. Next week, we're gonna look at five of my favorite travel guitars under $500. Yes, indeed. These guitars make travel easy and they are pretty easy on the wallet compared to other full-size guitars. So that is happening next week. We'll also get to know another Tony's Acoustic Challenge member next week. In fact, his name is Michael G and he has one hell of a story that you're going to want to hear. Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, your guitar progress, however you define it, is only as good as your guitar routine. Until next week, thank you so much for being a guitar geek. There I am rhyming again. Next week, guitar geek, it'll be really at our peak. I'm gonna just give up. I'm, I'm good. I've, rhym I've rhymed out for the day. Uh, bottom line, thanks so much for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember, guitar geeks unite. Cheers. Thank you.